No, it's late, but I really don't care. I felt like breaking down some film and it was done. So I said, let me put it up. Let me see if you guys can hear me, number one. And uh, I'll see if you guys can uh, see what I'm showing. I know I can see that. That looks clear to me. All right. Let me see if I'm live. Okay. Here we go. All right. We're going to be bringing down Neville Gallimore, but I'll wait for a few of you to join up first before we uh, before we start anything. Uh, Connor was good. It was good, man. Uh, yep. Yep. I'm up on the late night cause I know y'all ain't got nothing to do and I don't have nothing to do other than break down this film right now. So let's get it done. Um, hold on one second though. Let me add one other element to this little equation and that is this chat box. I want to be able to chat with y'all while I do my thing. Got to make it small enough over here so I can see it. And yeah, we good now. All right, so I can do both at the same time. All right, yes, sir. What's good, Eddie? What's good, I Green? How you, man? What's up? What's up? What's up, Dallas? Our meticulous uh, details podcast. Year, what's good? Yes, yes, want the eleven hundred? Uh, want? Yes, want? <laughs> what you? What I think about the QB? Haven't got that far in the film yet. I'll get there uh, in about. A day or so but uh if you can see uh, you guys can't see what's under this video but what i did I'm, I'm gonna try something new and you guys can see on the screen how it's like flashing through this entire breakdown usually what i would do at this point in a breakdown which would used to take longer was do a voiceover to every play that i got listed and queued up here what i did now is i just queued up every player that we drafted and all the plays that are in there i already edited them a lot of them anyway at least for neville and what I'll do is instead of doing voiceovers and publishing videos, I'll jump on live and I'll break those videos down while we're sitting on here. So that way I can get more content out. I can uh, get longer content out and I don't have to, uh, you know, cut corners to try to make sure my videos aren't too long because you guys can sit here and watch them live if you want to. If you don't want to watch them live, then I will segment them out. I will clip them out, start cutting them up. And those will be the videos that I traditionally put out, like the 15 minute, 10 minute videos, they'll be there. But these videos will be longer. You guys can ask questions. You guys can tell me, you know, different aspects that you wanna see live while we're watching it. So that way I don't miss anything. And then sometimes I won't even lie, like some of you guys come at me and I'm not always right. You know, the film tells me something and I see what I see, but two eyes are better than none or one, or one pair, should I say. So sometimes you guys see things that I really, didn't pay attention to and you'll say it in the notes but I already spent 40 hours on one breakdown or 10 hours on another and I'm like I'm not breaking that same guy down again so this way we don't even have that problem because while I'm breaking it down if you guys see something you want to see a play again or you got a question about a play or you thought I saw something wrong with a play, you can say it right here I mean, that's why I call it to prove it with the film session because anything I say or anything you guys are saying you know we'll be able to dig right into it like real time and this is uh I think I, I think I like this a little bit better uh, for me anyway so let's let's uh, try it out and uh, see how you guys like it um, yep so we're going to start you know I'm, I'm going to get to you guys so if I'm not checking remember I'm looking at like two different screens here or three so if I don't see everything you're saying I'll get to it I'm just uh, I'm going in first for um, the breakdown so here we go let's get started all right Okay, now one thing that I want to say before we really dig in is Oklahoma, um, shout out to those guys, but the way they run their defense, they ran a dollar defense for most of uh, most of the year. And what that allowed them to do because of Neville Gallimore, uh, it allowed them to maximize how many people they drop back in coverage and also disguise their, their blitzes off the edge a little bit better. And I want you guys to pay attention to their number nine because we have a number nine too. His name's Jalen. Smith, he wears 54, but he used to wear nine in college. Um, Kenneth Murray uh, Jr. is a lot, built a lot like Jalen was in college. Athletic, prototypical linebacker. I think his his vision and his um, pass rushing ability and block shedding isn't near where Jalen's is, but um, I think a lot of his draft stock came from Neville Gallimore, and you guys will see that in this video. And that's why I like to watch the film rather than just the game, because you can watch the film and see things that, you know, Neville might not make a play like here. He doesn't necessarily make the play, but you notice and you'll see this trend. It'll take three. It takes three all day against him. So uh, 
they can rush three and he will take three guys up on his own. I see that the 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 quality on live isn't that great. I don't like how choppy it looks on YouTube. It doesn't even look like that on my screen. I'm not sure why it's all murky like that. Let me try to fix that before we continue though. I don't I don't like the quality. Hold on a second. Uh okay, now it looks better. Why is it? Maybe it's lagging or something. I don't know. It looks good there. I don't know. I don't know why it's doing it, but um yeah. For a second, it freezes. Are you guys seeing it clear or does it look frizzy to you guys too? Let me see. Say yes, no. Is it frizzy or is it clear? Maybe it's just my computer. I don't know. Because it, it just cleared up a second ago. Let me know before I move on. Rue, let me know. It's one of y'all. It's frizzy. It's frizzy. Okay, yeah. You guys are right. Clear, clear, frizzy. Yeah, I don't know. Hold on. All right. Hmm. I don't know what I would need to do to fix that, though, because my resolution is all the way up. Go to settings real quick. Hold on. Let me go to settings. Um, I don't know. You guys are just going to bear with me this time. I'm going to have to fix that. But um, here we go. But you'll notice, like I said, that there's usually if 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 they three man pass rush, there's usually three people uh, relegated to uh, Neville Neville Gallimore. Man, he's a, a wrecking ball to say the least. Like this is what he does. Every play, play in, play out. He wedges. He 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 breaks our our, our bust through double teams like nobody's business. He said, what's up, Koya? You visually impaired? <laughs> oh, no, you said you are actually a visually impaired fan. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, man, I, I appreciate it. How do you uh, absorb the the content, though? Uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to be smart. Like, how do you, how do you um, what's best for you if you're visually impaired? Like, do you, you like real expl explanatory type stuff? Like, what is it? Like, how do you, how do you better, uh, I guess, interact with the content that way? Yo, what's up, Vach? How you, man? Are you man? I, I saw that reaction. You was real emotional too, man. I, I saw them uh them tears, them tears look like they was uh they was about to start pouring, bro. But uh you know what I mean. I don't mind you being emotional about the Cowboys. I ain't gonna give you no judgment for that. You know what I mean? What's good though? All right, let's get into it though. Um, you'll notice though, like on a on a regular basis, he takes on triple and double teams without a problem. It's never an issue for him. And um. I say that because a double team is standard. Triple is like you know you, you see that happen on on a regular basis. They score here, but I I don't I don't got, I don't want you guys to pay attention too much to the outcome of every play. I want you just to see what his impact on each play is and how much you know personnel and attention you know he absorbs. I'm trying to relax, Vash. You know you a little too hype over there though, bro. I'm trying to relax. You know what I mean? You see, they tripped him here. They, they, you, you got to hold him. Anything you do with Neville Gallimore, you know, other than, you know, chop his legs out, it's not going to work. You can triple team him. You know, he's going to free up everybody else on the defense. Uh, you can double team him. He's going to split it. And if you're crazy enough to go one on one with him, uh, God bless whoever that man is. And I, I don't care if it's Tyler Badass, Travis Fredericks, Jr., Jr., whoever it is, I haven't seen him successfully blocked one-on-one -on -one at all and they do something interesting because i was asking like well what will we do with him woods the tari dantari poe so on we have like three one tech guys right three of them um what 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 oklahoma does with them when they run their dollar is they'll put two guys out there that are nose tackles like number 55 is a little a little stout i don't know if he's i don't know how heavy he is but he usually is not really pass rushing he takes on double teams and so does neville and then they'll free up 31 or 35 on the edge. I don't know who, who that guy is, but they'll free him up and he'll be ISOed every time. So they don't need to blitz. All right. So I'll show you what I mean in a second here when those plays come up. But yeah, that, 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 uh, that run play, he got tripped up on that one in particular. Um, you know, they, they, uh, they stunt here. He's actually, he moves a lot like Malik Collins, a big guy that can actually get out or get out there and get around. Like he, he can move when he's freed up. So, he has some wheels, you know, he ran like a four, seven or four, eight. So he can move man, in a straight line. And he's a high motor guy for a guy that's that big uh, and that aggressive, uh, which is something you want to see. And wh how I know that is because he's always like a, in the fourth quarter, he's still rocking it, man. It's no problem. 
you see here, th this is how much of the scheme he he actually takes up for that offense. They spilled through here, and instead of looking for a linebacker or trying to get to the next level, Neville's down here somewhere just spilling around. And when he does that, this is a running play. They're not even trying to lead out in front of their, their guy. They're following Neville around this, this pile here, and that's crazy. <laughs> the center and the, and the guard follow, and then they try to peel back and get to Murray, but it's a little too late for that. So I think, uh, you know, Murray owns, owes a lot of his draft stock to Neville and those guys because after watching the film, uh, I'm not trying to hate on Murray. I just don't like him half as much as I, as I did um, because I feel like he was able to run free and, and, and be that sideline to sideline guy because a lot of the things Neville is able to do. And, you know, that's, you know, that's a, it's a team sport, so you can't really hate on him for that. He, he earned his tackles the way he did. But I noticed that even when Neville is soaking up blocks, nine and number 23, their linebackers for Oklahoma, still had trouble finding the ball when there were no, there were no blockers getting to the second level in a lot of these, uh, a lot of these clips. So, you know, it's, it's like, you know, will Jalen, and this is, this is just a testament to how you could see him benefiting or impacting the Cowboys early on. Because will Jalen and LVE have problems finding or reacting and, and assessing these plays uh, with a guy like Neville, Dontari Poe, or Woods, or McCoy, or whoever, you know, sort of soaking up double team and triple teams right in front of them? I don't think they'll have that much of an issue. I think Jalen, he works best. And Ray Lewis even said this himself. Um, he owes a lot of his his uh, career to those guys out in front, you know, Haloni Nada. Um, you know, uh, Sarah Goosa, those, those, those guys, right? Um, same thing is going to be uh, said for Jalen at the end of his career. The better he'll play will be dictated by uh, how well you you allow him to run and flow sideline to sideline. And that's only going to come if he has those guys in the middle that are kind of piling it up. But this, I stop here because this is an example of what I was just talking about. At the top of the screen, you'll see Gall uh, Gallimore. I, I try to say Goddard because there's a dude that I read. So if you if you hear me confusing and say Neville Goddard, that's a a, a a a writer that I listen to or that I read sometimes, and uh, he just so happens to have and it'll be the only Neville I knew before this. So Neville Goddard might come out, but I know who I'm talking about. Um, anyway, bad just bad with names, but um, ne Gallimore's at the top and and 55's at the top, and they're ISO and down the bottom here you see. I think 35 is just isolated on his own. You'll get that a lot. So this will be like a Demarcus Lawrence if, if we decide to go with three-man rushes here and, and use Gallimore and let's say a Dontari Poe or Gallimore and uh, McCoy or McCoy and Woods, whoever. It doesn't matter the combination. But you can see like when they when they uh, wanted to soak up blocks and iso a guy and still get pressure with only a three-man rush, this is what Oklahoma did on a consistent basis. It'll work a little different in the NFL, obviously, because some of those guys are paid to go one-on-one -on -one with your – with your line, but uh, you'll notice that they were consistently, Oklahoma that is, consistently bringing pressure with only three guys. And that's because of Gallimore. They wouldn't have been able to do it as effectively without stunting uh, without Gallimore. Uh, you see there, Montley didn't get drafted either. That's an undrafted free agent quarter that somebody going to pick up that number 11 for Oklahoma. He's an undrafted right now. I don't know when the, uh, when the, uh, when they start starting to draft uh, free agents, but He's one that somebody will look at. Feisty dude started all three years, number 11 on the on the uh, left side here, bottom of the screen. Here's another three-man um, uh, situation. Obviously, he's going to get three because there's only three men rushing, but it's the power of three, man. He gets three every play consistently, man. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I've and and I I seen him split triple teams. You see here, I want to watch this play again because this is what I'm talking about with Murray. Pay attention to Murray. Murray's right here, right here. All right, so he's going to blast through there, and he's not using his eyes at all because he's going to run right into the back of Neville. But he's going to blast through there, and uh, and, and they, they almost pushed the pocket right into the running back's lap. Uh, but you see they gave up a play here. Even though Neville gave him a lane to the ball, a free lane, he's not using his eyes. He just ran in there without his eyes. And um, not like I said, I'm not trying to hate on Murray, but you just see how, how, how these plays are, like, teed up for both he – and number uh, 23, they're, they're untouched on a lot of these plays. And uh, they have to make these plays. They have to make these plays. This is Neville just doing it all himself uh, on this run or whatever. But uh, you can see, like, he's he's stout against the run. If you decide to run a 3-4 and put him out as a 3-4 defensive end, he can do it. And he'll kill any tackle you got out there. He'll, if, you, if you decide to use him as a nose, like a Jay Ratliff type, athletic nose tackle, he can do that. If you want a one-tech, one three-tech, doesn't matter what you do with him. 
um, just make sure he's on the field because he has a motor and he's a young guy that that definitely has moves on top of moves. So, I mean, I just like what I see in him overall, period. But um, when I saw that he was constantly ripping through double teams, you could see him doing it here. But when I saw that he was constantly ripping through double teams and just wreaking havoc without any blitzing. I saw how good this guy was. And I know he was ranked number three behind Ken Law. And I forget who the other defensive tackle they had in front of him was. But um, it depends on how you're ranking. If you're ranking based off of just chaos factor or his ability to disrupt or or the percentage, maybe his PFF might be higher too, his percentage against double teams and triple teams, I, I would say he's he's the best at that. Like he gets more attention than I've seen an average DT get. And like you see how many times he gets hit on this play. I'm going to replay this play one more time. I'll let it play out for right now. But, you know, he gets hit multiple times on each play. Let's watch this again. On every play. Like and he's getting he's throwing 320 pound guys out of the way. So he splits his double team already. He just swipes it out, uh, swipes out to his left. He's going to step around it. Now he gets held there, right? And then he's going to get help. This guy's going to get help coming in. He treats that like it's nothing. That's a 320 pound guy crackback blocking on him. Look how much of an effect it has. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> he just jogs away from it like it's nothing. That is nothing to him. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? So. That I like to see in a young guy. You know what I mean. Tristan Hill is 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 I think has a lot of promise. He's he we, he shows that he can get upfield. Um, I don't know about his two gapping or his ability to like to, to stand this guy up, but we don't mention him that often. But Tristan is another guy that I think will get some more uh, productivity out of in his second year. Uh, but he he doesn't do this as much. He's an upfield guy. Uh, Gallimore is is a two gapper. Like he'll hold you up, stand you up, and as you can see. It's only a three-man rush again, and they get there because he's soaking up three guys, and he does it without stepping back. He doesn't take a – oh, excuse me, got the hiccups, has some pizza. But he doesn't take a step back at all, and this creates opportunities underneath for, for his corners to jump routes and so on because you don't get a lot of time even – because when he's there, you see how he's there right now sucking up that do, that double team. <laughs> and uh, each each one of his guys out here on the line, I don't know what numbers they are right now. Can't see it. Let me see this. Uh, 35. 91 and, and 31, I think that is. But they're all singled up because of him. They're all singled up every play. Everyone else is singled up because of him. He's always, always absorbing that double team, but holding his own at the same time. And if you pay attention, they play defense a lot like we did because they run dollar almost all day. Uh, you can't really throw deep on them. They have multiple defensive backs or athletic linebackers out here, but there's a bunch of space and opportunity behind uh, Gallimore. So if Gallimore is not stout in the middle here, you're going to run all over him all day, whether you're out of shotgun or not. It doesn't matter. Everything's predicated on him. He, they set the edge on, on each side on running plays. So they'll, they'll set the edge and contain and funnel everything in through Gallimore. And then they have Murray and, and whoever 23 is backing him up. And his job is just to make sure his double team doesn't get to the second level. And he does that on a consistent basis. I'm not reading what you guys are saying, so I'll get over there in a second. My fault. <laughs> Y'all going there. But uh, let's play, let's let this play play out. I was going the last two days. I had to work, man. But I was like, damn, I, I was mad I couldn't get to the second day of the draft. I was mad as hell. But I said, all right, I, I'll uh, I'm just gonna edit all this film. Yesterday I, I sat here editing this and then earlier today so that I can uh I can do this live session because I wanted to try this. So I'm glad though. Let's see here. Same concept. You know what I mean? He's he's over here on the edge here though this time, but always double team. So he's the he's the one tech, one tech freak, always double team. I can't imagine what a team is gonna do on first on early downs when you got him and Woods out there if we go four three, or him and Poe out there if we go four three. You know, I can't imagine what you're gonna do with that. Uh goal line set sets where you got him, Poe and uh and um and um what's his face out there, uh Woods. Him, Poe, and Woods out there at the same time with a McCoy out there on goal lines. Like, our line is ridiculous, and we got guys who are young and up and coming. We haven't been this good all defensively or just as a team, period, but we haven't been this good as far as our defensive line since Russell Maryland, Leon Lett, Charles Haley, and those guys, man. We got names before you even get to the depth, and that is, you know, that's that's old news, man. You said uh, that's David Jenkins. Uh, Koi, I was hoping our Cowboys would have picked up Randy Moss's son, Thaddeus Moss, after the draft, but Skin signed him. Um, 
I, I mean, I like Thaddeus. I like him. He he played okay in uh in, in, in this game, I think. Um, but I don't know. I think he built like a more of a, a, a tight end though. He's a big dude, but he's not as uh he's not as athletic as his as his father, in, in my opinion. I don't know. But um I like him. I like him. Uh, can't say I would have drafted him, but I like him. <laughs> I like him. You said David Irving is coming. Yeah, if we the only thing holding them back, you know what I mean? If we the only thing holding them back, I definitely think that uh that uh he'll be back. He'll be back. I don't like the way he left. It wasn't about the fact that he wanted to smoke. It was about the arrogance of the way he left. And I'm not saying that I have a problem with you speaking up for yourself as a man. Do what you want. But um, I just don't think that the way he left bodes well for the narrative of him coming back, if you know what I mean. He he kind of he kind of messed himself up a little bit. Sort of like like Dez hit himself. I see you guys talking about Dez in the um in the comments. Dez kind of hurt himself too. But here we go. Let me, I'm gonna stop stopping these plays every five seconds. Sorry about that. Every time I get on a little rant, I don't want to just let it play because I don't want to miss what's happening to my damn self. Because I haven't watched this myself. I'm doing this live. All right, now you, now watch this play here. This is like his chaos factor, and this is what I and, and I know that's not technical football term. This is what stands off the screen. Like check it, he destroys shit in the middle of the field, man. He destroys it. And if and if you use your eyes here, see this is this. I think this is number twenty three. What I was talking about, uh, but they. Oh no, that's not twenty three. Sorry. But they don't really pay attention to where they're rushing. Like, they'll rush right into him. But he creates lanes for you all day. If you're shading off of your blocker, he's knocking guys out of the way all day long. So if you if you just pay attention, use your eyes and use good vision, you're going to have clear lanes to the ball because he's going to give them to you. Because he's not just trying to get a sack on any given play or every play, even though that play ends in a touchdown as well. He's not going for sacks every play. He'll sacrifice himself a lot like Malik Collins used to do for us uh, so that other guys can get, get busy. But when he does that, you see here, he's teeing you up. Get busy. Get busy. They make the tackle here, but you see what I'm saying? Like, there's nobody getting to the second level. He creates a wall, but now Murray, instead of Murray flowing right here, you see, he could flow over the top. This is his gap. He's where he's supposed to be, but he overcommits to this gap because he he hasn't read the running back yet. So he's just going to overcome. He's going to come in here. There's no reason for him to plug here because Gallimore is already in here. I know it's happening in seconds and not minutes like it is here, but you know, naturally, you see, he's going to plug this gap and he's going to get walled off. When he gets walled off, three accelerates, and now it's just between him and I think Fields, number 10 there, uh, safety. He gets down there and Fields, he, he, he makes the tackle. But uh, Gallimore just opens up lanes for you to just fire through. He does it here. Look, look, look there. He's just tossing two, like this is 600 pounds of man right here in front of him. 600, 700 pounds of man in front of him, two of them, right? Look at what he does. It is he just yoked the hell out of him. This is like uh, Avengers when when Hawk tried to try Thanos, man, in the beginning of that joint. He just he he just yoked the shit out of him real quick, man. But he just tossed him like it was nothing while handling his his guy, like while handling the, the double team. He wedged his shoulder into one man and just threw the other one with his other hand like it was nothing, like a little boy. Right here, he does the same thing. You go at him with one, it's like you're not even there. That's one guy trying to block him, number 70. And this is LSU. It's not like you're going up against, you know, Iowa State. You know, one guy is not going to get it. It's like you're not even there. You by yourself. There's nothing. There's nothing. So, like I said, I, I like this kid. I'm not just on him because it's Dallas. Uh, I really I really like him. Our first three picks, you know, you could say, you know, whatever you want. But our first three picks were solid. I think we got three first-round talents in the first – uh, three rounds and even our fourth round pick in uh in Reggie Robinson I actually like him uh just as much as I like Trayvon Diggs to be honest with you here you see here as here's another example of what I mean you know he's going just you know manhandle this guy if you if you block him with one guy it's nothing and he frees up the rest of his team so that they can just you know flow to the ball naturally but you see there you see how this guy just runs into him these guys have free plays on this ball but i don't know what they're looking at both both murray here and uh number 35 there i think he was uh stunting on this play and, and the running back kind of stutter step but uh this is all gallimore gallimore has opened up lanes for murray to make way more plays than he's made i've watched him run an uh, overrun play after play after play uh, because he's his vision, his athleticism is there, but he has some issues with his vision. So it'll be interesting to see if he works on that uh, now. I don't know who he got drafted by, but it'll be interesting to see if he works on that. 
you, you, you talk about a, a nay and a, a badass with stills. Oh, yeah, they were definitely stills. Who said that? Uh, uh, Jack Duncan. What's up, bro? Yeah, yeah, they definitely were stills for sure, for sure. It was solid all the way through. Yeah, that play could have been stopped, though. And I'm not nitpicking. I'm just saying, like, you see here, this is this is all. Hold up, let me get back to it. So yeah, this is all um, Murray here. So you, on the back end, the the blitz kind of caved this in. You see Gallimore here pushing the pocket back or pushing the the the, the gap back into the running back's face. This is, uh, um, I think Jefferson. No, this is um, uh, Chase. I'm sorry, Jamar Chase. But push the 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 blocker back into Chase's lap. And I know it's Chase, but this is this is all Murray and Chase. He has to make this play. He's just watching. He's had he hasn't reacted to it, and watch how long it takes him to react. But this is what Gallimore will do for Jalen. Jalen can make these plays. Jalen can make these plays sideline to sideline. That's what he likes to do, and that's what he's built to do. If you free him up, and I think they're doing everything in their power to free him up. You see these blitzes. They're they're all you know when they blitz. They have free running lanes, and that's because Gallimore is like a black hole in the middle of the field. Here again, you got to make these plays. He's going to make this tackle, but just watch it. Just watch it. Boop. Gone. Let's do it again. Watch it again. Let's watch that again. And I'm not busting on him. I'm just saying, like, this is what he's setting you up to do. He's setting you up to be able to, like, everybody else is funneling right through the middle. Like I said, this defense works. They'll they'll box out or uh, – Contain on outside, set the edge on, on both sides of the ball, on both sides of the line, and then they funnel everything. I'm pointing like you guys can see my finger, sorry. But they funnel everything down the center here and behind Gallimore. So if Gallimore holds up, great. He makes the play here at the line of scrimmage or in the backfield, hopefully. Uh, and then behind him is, is Murray. That's and he, His job is just to keep hands off of Murray, and he does that all game. Murray has to, has to like be more decisive here. I know he has a little bit of a mess to get through, but – he has to read and assess a little bit quicker, in my opinion, even though this is not, you know, he ain't on our team, so it ain't like it matters. So, you know, I don't care if you're good or not, to be honest with you. But uh, it's just interesting to watch that. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just imagining what type of impact uh, he'll have with the personnel that we have. Here's um, something that New England likes to do, and this is what, uh, what, what you do to kind of uh, create pressure or artificial pressure. Uh, when you're running only three uh, three men, or when you're blitzing only three, uh, what they do is they'll have their linebacker. New England does this. If there's a running back in the backfield, whatever way he releases, if he releases right, this linebacker will have man or flat zone or whatever it may be, but he'll pick him up as he releases. If he releases left, same thing. But they also stand down at the line to force these tackles to kick out. So these tackles kicking out makes it so that these guards have to protect their inside shoulder just in case there's a stunt or a blitz inside. They have, if there isn't any, they need to just protect the inside shoulder because they're kicking out. And if 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 they don't, if they if he were to block here, there would be, you know, B gap would be wide open on both sides. So what they did was they elected to kick out. Everybody kicked out because these linebackers are out here and that ISO Gallimore. And let's watch what he does with this ISO. You can't leave him by himself. And Texas kept doing it. Like they were crazy. And that's why this is one of his better games. It wasn't because he was against lesser opposition. It's just because they were crazy enough to try to block him one with one man multiple times. It does not work. You cannot block this dude with one guy. He will kill you. I like him. It's like he's not there. If you block him with one guy, it's, it's, it's like it's nobody blocking him. It's like it's nobody blocking him. Said, uh, let me get to some of your questions after this play. I'll let them celebrate real quick. Y'all can watch that celebration. You said Dez is the wide receiver that can keep everybody healthy. Y'all going crazy on the Dez convo. What are we talking about? What's up, Jer Jeremy X? What's good with you? I'm going up into the chat real quick. All right. What's good with you, Jarwin? Dez not coming back. <laughs> um. I don't know, man. I th I feel like if Dez is gonna come back, it gotta be this year, and it's gonna it gotta be the off season. If he doesn't get picked up by us, I'm not sure about his career. I would have said his chances of coming back were pretty damn high until we drafted Lamb. I would like to see Lamb uh, and Dez on the same team. Honestly, I think Dez would be great for this team. But uh, and and it's not like 
it would cost us a lot, but I'm not going to keep, you know, you know, beating a dead horse either. I think that he, he can uh, definitely play still. If Jerry sees that, then go ahead. Um, you know, Dez as your fourth receiver. <laughs> yeah. If that ain't, if that ain't valuable enough for you, I don't know what, uh, what you're saying. Uh, you said Jerry try to get a uh, CD to, to wear 88. That'd be fucked up if you wear 88 and Dez do come back. Damn. He said, uh, Dez should be in the NFL. What are you talking about, Tyrone Church? You said he got the news uh, this week. What you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yep. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't want to keep harping on it, but I, I do. I would still go do that. But I just don't know who gets them uh, at this point. It, you know, it might be us, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Everybody who's saying zero chance, you know, you just got to reevaluate what you're talking about here, man. Like on some real shit. Everybody who says Dez has zero chance of playing in the NFL again, you got to ask yourself why you really saying that. For real. For real. Because you're not saying it because you're saying Dez can't play football. That's not why you're saying it. So if you're saying it, it's because you don't like him. And if you don't like him, just say, I don't like Bull, and I don't want him to get a chance in the league. But don't say, Dez can't play. That's not true. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe that. I don't. Uh, and it's not because, like I said, I'm not no, you know, uh, Dez acolyte. It's just like, can Dez play better than Tim Brown did his last day playing football? Or, uh, you know, plenty of other guys. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of guys in this league right now who can't ball better than Dez right now, and they still in the league. So, that's why I say it's like, okay, you know, he, he deserves a shot wherever he can get one because you can't name me one thing that he's done that deserves uh, a lifetime ban other than make you people hate him. I don't know why you hate him, but why does he have a lifetime ban and nobody else does? Because he say what he want? Isn't that what you are supposed to do in this world? Where did that come from? I get on here, I say what I want, right? That's why you guys listen because I'm not letting anybody else tell me what to say. Uh, so why should he? Because he gets paid more. So if I get paid a million, I got to shut up. If somebody start paying me for this show, I got to start letting you tell me how to do it. That don't make sense. So yeah, I don't know. You guys can make that argument, but it's uh it's not a it's not a valid argument. You let the me and that let me know you let the media uh, uh battery back you too. So you probably lining up for you know some some injections. No offense, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm just saying you know, yeah, I'm nobody gonna make me do shit. So you probably line enough for that if you just line enough for, for for news and you just believe what you're told. But anyway, let's get back to what we talking about here. And that's this draft that I'm hype about. All right, a little grainy. I'm going to fix this, though, uh, the, the graininess of it. I think I might have amplified it too much. That might be what it is because I can see it pretty clear. But uh, it, it's probably uh, magnified a little bit too much. So I'll fix that on the next one. Um, and you guys will see that moving forward let's watch this here this is this is uh what Jalen will be doing other than you know rather than covering wide receivers like they have him doing um last year he'll be playing that spillover uh defense where he's just covering the running back as he releases left right whatever and this is what Jalen I think is more suited to do like covering the Camaras and the and the Christians out of the the backfield is what I think he's more primed for He's not meant to be covering wide receivers in the open field, nor LVE. I think they can definitely handle the running back easily. And uh, you see here, this is this is you know what Murray does with it. But this is what we want to see. You know, just your 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 linebacker just able to flow, assess the play. He's supposed to he's supposed to crack down, and and he has a free uh, lane to this ball. He has to make this play. He does. Um, but that's what Neville Gallimore will do for the Cowboys. If you guys are asking. And why I think he's not just a third round pickup because he allows you guys to flow sideline to sideline when he's out there. So even if he doesn't start, he allows your your starter in Poe or Woods, whoever that winds up being, uh, he allows them a breather without the fall off that you would get usually when you bring your second string out there, you get run on or you have to blitz in order to bring pressure or you might have to change your scheme because, you know, you don't have the right personnel. You don't have that problem. You know what I mean? You don't have Tyrone Crawford trying to play one tech when Woods gets tired. You know what I mean? Or Ross or whoever else we had in there just throwing guys in there. You know what I mean? Collins, I think, played uh, formidably and admirably. But And I was I was kind of sad that Collins was going. But then I forgot that uh, we had a draft. 
and we brought Gallimore in. So I don't mind. I don't mind. I think he has just as much upside, if not more, uh, than Collins because I feel like he's a lot more of a force than Collins was. Collins was more finesse than than just wild man. He had this ability, but he wasn't as consistent. Uh, Gallimore is built like a a rock. You know, he he doesn't mind getting in there and just getting physical on every play, on every play. So, like, like I said, I'm just happy to see him on this team, man. I'm happy to see what we're doing here. We got um, uh, Trevor, uh, um, Trayvon Diggs coming up next. I got him coming up. Uh, I'll do that and the continuation of Gallimore as well uh, tomorrow. But um, we'll break him down. We'll finish breaking this down today, and then I'll have a, a couple of things I want to cover tomorrow, and I'll get that and Trayvon in, and then I'll work my way back to Lamb. Uh, wide receivers are a little different. I do wide receivers and DBs. Uh, they're a little more difficult because you have to watch an entire game to get their film uh, because you you want you don't want to miss any of their plays. Uh, so I'll I'll, uh, I'll have to watch this, these games in its entirety to get the uh, um, the footage for both those guys. But I'm on it. That's what I'm on right now. And a lot of that's actually loaded up in here already. I just have don't have enough of it already. But you see here, you see there. That's that was all all Gallimore. Uh, even though, you know, Murray does his thing. He does what he's supposed to do here. But you see there, he, this is something that you see Jalen do all the time, which is those stunts that we have him run a lot of times with uh, with Demarcus Lawrence. You see there? You're only going to get half a man, but these are the things that he'll help, and th these are the types of, uh, uh, of lanes and opportunities he'll open, up, open us up for and, and he'll help uh, Jalen with by making it so that he doesn't have to deal with shedding a guy in front of him every single play or guys getting up to that second level uh, when, when you know, that front four doesn't do what it's supposed to. And you see Murray's running free and just cracking motherfuckers, man, all day. And that's because he's able to. There's nobody getting to him. And so that, that's why I say that, you know, he owes a lot of his draft stock to Gallimore because of that. You know, you see that here. Yeah. But over and over again, that's all he does is deliver, man. We call him what they call him. Look, look at this right here, man. He yoked the shit out of the grown ass man. Look at that. One hand. This is some uh some Aaron Donald type shit right here. Watch this. Yup. Get out of here, young boy. Let me see that one more time. He just mushed the shit out of him, man. Grown ass man. Craziness. Craziness. And he, he forces late throws too. So those those that that timing that he disrupts and the way he disrupts, it forces uh, quarterbacks to throw the ball late as well. But it's just his toughness in the middle, period. Like that's what jumps off the screen. Like he's just a tough load to bring down. He doesn't care. And uh he, he's a he's a smart cerebral player. Uh but besides that, he has a motor that's just out of this world. So for me, like I was excited. I was probably most excited out of the first uh three rounds I was most excited about him um and that's because I wanted uh AJ Epinesa a lot I did I actually wanted AJ Epinesa but I felt like Epinesa gave us you know a wild man up front that gave us versatility to play four three or three four um but I have to say that the addition of Anai and Gallimore uh make that a lot more um realistic to me than Epinesa by himself would have I think Gallimore can do what I wanted Epinesa to do, which is if you want, so you can play him three, four uh, defensive end if you want. And that's just, that's, you know, him and Woods and, and, uh, and, and uh, McCoy out there with uh, De Demarcus Lawrence on the edge, Jalen on the edge, or uh, Gregory, Anai, you name it, Jelks. Think about the athleticism that we have a linebacker right now. You got, uh, let me get a pen out because I'm going to forget some names for sure for sure you said bradley and i is the same as aj um he's a samoan so if that's what you mean <laughs> but he, he he definitely plays like i think he's uh just as wild he has that it factor that you want but you got bradley you got bradley and i you got um lawrence you got gregory AD, so Alden Smith. Jalen can pass rush from the outside. Depending, if you're running like this dollar uh, formation, so if it's, you know, if we run dollar instead of nickel, 
when we when we're out there or try to put three hands down if it's a three four we probably will run more dollar than than uh than dime just to get that extra db on the field so if we ran that then you'll see lve on the outside sometimes you know guarding running backs or whatever tight ends out of the backfield sometimes blitzing uh, on that edge um you also have mccoy jelks um woods tristan hill um who else did, who didn't i name i'm not talking about linebackers though but either way just 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 naming that alone like lawrence i got lawrence i got gregory i got ad got jokes got mccoy oh poe i didn't even name poe that's crazy that's crazy but but already then you got um J uh, jackson so joe jackson you know you know he liked to whoop his kids so you got joe jackson you got um armstrong so dorance armstrong crazy man <laughs> crazy crazy i right, stop there and i don't know what 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 crawford is crawford coming back i don't know what's up with crawford is he uh i don't know is is crawford coming back okay well and crawford you could pick crawford there too who i thought played a lot like aj epinesa except for epinesa's younger stronger and, and a lot more physical than crawford is but crawford is an epinesa type where you, you don't mind putting him anywhere up front. He's a guy that, you know, can get some snaps and, and give some guys some some breathers. But think about that. Any combination that you want to use, you can run 4-3 with those guys. But I think with the athleticism that we have at linebacker, especially with Jelks out there, with Gregory uh, Law uh, or Lawrence, however you want to say it, uh, Alden Smith, Jalen, with, with the amount of athleticism you have on the edge, if we decided to go three four, I think it gives us a lot more flexibility. So I think we will throw some hybrid in there. Even though McCarthy came out and said we're running four three, um, I think we still will see a mix of a lot of uh, uh, some three four looks in there on a regular basis, or we'll transition to it. But either way, uh, we have the ability to do it. Yeah, you guys say Michael Bennett on a one year deal, why not? I can agree with that too. You know, I can agree with that too, but. Um, right now, I want us to play 3-4, man. I won't lie. I want us to play 3-4. I want us to run 3-4 because I feel like 3-4 gives our, our linebackers and gives our, our defense a, a chance to play uh, the way I think we play best, uh, not only from a coverage standpoint, but, but I think we have a, a uh, an athletic, hard, striking, rally-to-the-ball type team. A lot of that is a, a holdover from Marinelli's um, time Marinelli preached uh, rallying to the ball and getting to the football. Chris Fischer preached attacking the ball, which is something that he did talk about on a regular basis. Um, yes, I think we have the linebackers for three, four. Um, if you look at Jalen, Jalen can blitz from the middle. He's solid from the middle. Uh, he can definitely play on the perimeter on the edge if he wants to. His pass rushing ability is crazy. And you have D law on the other side. Uh, I know you probably prefer four three two. If it's Madden, I prefer four three. Uh, but in, uh, this team in particular, I just always saw this team as a three four team, uh, athletically. Uh, especially last year, if you guys look at the way we were stunting all the, all the time, we were using our athleticism to stunt, but we were doing it out of vanilla ass looks. If if you have uh, your linebacker standing up and your defensive end standing up, you don't know who's coming or not. If you have Jalen, if you're going to have Jalen covering anyway, and you have Jalen out on, on the edge, you don't know if he's covering blitz. You don't know what he's doing. So I think three, four just gives us more flexibility there. That's why I keep saying it. I don't prefer either. It just depends on who you are. Like if we're talking Seattle, I think Seattle's a four, three team uh, and they should stay four, three. Uh, I just don't think we are. And everybody keeps talking about uh, LVE. LVE is not, uh, he's not the staple of this defense. He's just a player on this defense. I think we have more guys that are suited for 3-4 than 4-3. But even, even LVE, who's to say he's not suited for 3-4? Uh, LVE in 3-4 with guys in front of him who can keep bodies off of him is, is fine. He can still flow sideline to sideline. Uh, but I don't even know if LV is going to be able to play with the way his neck uh, is holding up. I'm, I'm just, I don't, I don't know. We don't know until we actually see him in action. So you can, you know, stick a pin in LV for right now, 
and uh and we see where we see how that goes um i mean he said he think uh oh you don't think he said native hawaiians believe their ancestors descend from uh star people well they play like it uh, i can tell you that they play like they believe that i love it they play wild like they they want physicality they they just want they want they with all the shits so yeah they play like it so yeah yeah, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna read some of your comments just to, just for some kicks. He said Tristan sports sports guru, what's up? He said Tristan Hill will be a factor this year. Mike's meticulous details podcast, uh, deep D line. Yes, we do have one. Yeah, yeah, never too much. What's up, Ready Red? Dez is a second tight end. <laughs> Dez ain't a tight end, man. Yeah, Young Bull Moss is slow. Let's see. What else you talking about? <laughs> he said Dak is Steve McNair. I actually said that myself. I don't think that's disrespect, though. Steve McNair was a baller. I like Steve McNair. I think he's a little better than Steve McNair, actually. A little faster and throws. Uh, Steve McNair, I don't know how he used to win. You know, rest in peace, but. He wasn't like a guy that was like dishing and, and dicing and, and that, you know, and, and slicing you up. You know, he just, he'd get the ball there, though. Yeah, he'd get the ball there. He doesn't give up plays. Uh, Gallimore, you're talking about? Yeah, I saw that. Tyrone. <laughs> Y'all call him Big Canada. That's uh, Jack Duncan. What's good? Esco Roll, what's good? What's good? I already said D. Will was good. David Jenkins. I don't know if Vod's still on here. Yeah, Anai had uh, D. Will said he had a, a Pac-10 or Pac-12 player of the year. He did, but I can care less, man. Watching him fire off the ball and just toss guys around, that's all I really care about. He's tight in the hips. He doesn't change directions very well. Um, Anai, that is, doesn't change very directions real well. Whatever direction he's running in, that's where he's going. But uh, when he but he's fast straight line, and he's vicious and and aggressive straight line. So right now he's probably like a situ situational pass rusher, which is fine. You know, you know until he understands uh, or, or or you understand how to use him in other situations. I think just having him come in on third downs and and contribute on special teams right now will be great, and we'll see in training camp uh, whether or not he can you know etch out a little bit more playing time on the edge, but. I like what I see on film, and I absolutely love Samoans because they don't just bleed blue and silver. You know, they bleed football. You know, they you probably split one of their wigs and a football would be, you know, under the cap. You know what I mean? So I like Samoans. I like the way they play football. And I, I don't know if that's racist or not, but if it is, uh, you know, whatever. I don't think I'm being racist. I like Samoans. Um... So where will Lamb play or Coop? I'm going to get the Lamb. What's up, uh, GM? I'm going to get the Lamb uh, soon. I was I was wrong about Lamb. I was wrong about the first three rounds of the draft. As I said, I was I was hung up on defense. But I think, like I said, I got we got what we wanted. I got what I wanted us to get. Uh, I even I even uh, don't mind grabbing a quarterback late either. Um, but uh, I think we shored up the corner position. We shored up the defensive line, which were two question marks for us. And uh, we went out and we grabbed the best player available in every single round. We went with that same strategy. It seemed like uh, you can't you can't deny that Lamb was the best player available at 17. Um, I thought we would get Chasen. I thought we would go after you know uh, a corner maybe. But um, the reason I like this draft and I, I got this from Vach, but um, he actually made me understand or like the the last draft. I think the last draft we argued about was LVE. And he said, well, if you switched, I think it was LV and Connor Williams that year. But he, he said, if you switched them, if you said uh, you got Connor first round, LV the second, or vice versa, I don't, I don't remember what combination it was. But he said, if you if you switched the first two picks, would you be happy? And I said, oh, hell yeah. I didn't want offense in the first round. But if I would have gotten Trayvon Diggs in that seven, with that 17th pick, would I have complained? Probably not. Probably wouldn't have complained. Uh, so that way, if you look at Lamb and Trayvon Diggs in the first two rounds, who can't be happy with that? And then if you bring back Neville Gall Gallimore behind that, like there's no complaint here, man. I love it. So um, I'll be just I'll, I'll be using my imagination, obviously, because we don't have any football to watch. 
So all I can do is speculate. So so that's actually good for me because I can chop up the film a little bit better and I draw up how I think we'll use these guys. And um, I, now that I tried this live, uh, I don't like how grainy this looks blown up, even myself. I don't know why I even look grainy. So I'll work on that. I'm using Zoom. Maybe it's the resolution of Zoom because it's not like that on my screen and it's not like that when I go live usually, but y'all can't even see my face. So with that, what I'll do over this uh, voiceover, I'm going to rip this off of the internet and then use the audio to put a uh, a highlight overlay over this uh, over this video because I don't like how grainy it is. But um, I'm on it. Uh, anything else y'all want to cover while I'm on here, I'm on. But, um, you know, what I'll be doing, I just told you, I'm going to be breaking down everybody. So um, I already got them all teed up. I don't think you can really see, you can't see it, but I already got everything teed up and we ready to go. I'm working on, when you get back here, you can see. I'm still working on, got a lot more Gallimore in there, as you can see. And and then we'll get to the beginning of um, of uh, of Trayvon. That's Trayvon there. Yeah, we'll get to that and we'll start working on Trayvon's film too. So I got him kind of queued up next and we'll go from there. But I uh, appreciate y'all jumping on at Hawk without any uh, warning whatsoever. So I appreciate that, man. And um, like I said, I'll see y'all tomorrow, man. I'm on it. I'm on. Let me read some more questions. Y'all got some questions at the end that I missed. And then I'll jump off here. He said, it looks good to you. First three picks. Top 50. Uh, yep, top 50. First, uh, first six. Uh, top 100. Yep. I agree with that. He said 91 was uh, Marilyn Harper. Uh, that was Alvin Harper. Yep, Dixon Edwards, remember him? Eric Williams, Godfrey Miles, remember him? Leon Lett, Larry Brown. Larry Brown was that bull. I like Larry Brown, too. Yeah, and Kevin Smith, remember those guys, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with, with Lamb, well, when you, I don't think we move Cooper around. as I think Lamb makes it so you don't have to move Cooper around. Lamb can do the things that you would have moved Cooper around to do, which is work this, the hell out of the slot, minus the the finicky nicks and bumps and bruises that Cooper will take where he got to, you know, take a playoff here and there. Lamb is a little different. Like, he likes working in the middle of the field, and he doesn't get hit clean for some reason. He he turns and attacks the ball and gets his shoulders and his eyes back up field fast enough uh, where you can't really tee up on him. And then you notice he's smart enough to know when to give up too. He's not, he's not running into guys just to run into guys. So when, when, when you see him get lined up or you see a guy lining him or look like he got him just dead to rights lined up for a banger or one of those bang, bang plays. Now nah, he, he kind of peels off of it or you only get a piece of him and his balance because he works on his footwork and his release is so much, his balance is so just tight that you you think that you knocked him off or you think that you knocked him down and he's still on his feet. He did that in that Texas game. He was doing that all game. Like, he did that all his career. So he'll continue to do that. So I think he works the middle of the field because of that. He just doesn't mind it. He said, Okoye, take care of your vision, sir. Stay blessed. I'll hit you on ID. Yeah. Uh, I will take care of my vision, bro. I'm visually impaired too, bro. You know, real shit. Uh, my glasses, my glass, I, I lost three pairs of glasses this year. Lost like two pair. Last, I traveled. Though. I, I was, I was flying everywhere. Uh, last year I was, I was partnered in a, uh, a hemp, uh, processing plant and, uh, just moving around doing all that. I, I, I lose things, man. I lost a lot of Bluetooth. I got like, you know, I own more Dre beats than a little bit, but I don't have but one pair because <laughs> the rest of them all over america man so yeah it's cool it's cool i'll get some more glasses when this uh corona situation is over i'll go to you know lens crafters or wherever the hell i gotta go but for right now you're gonna keep getting this squint man so deal with it i don't even think i need to squint no more because right now i can see i just squint out of habit because i can see i just do it but uh yeah yeah Shannon Sharp hated on dead there's old Shannon Sharp a box like i would i would straight rumble Shannon Sharp I would, I would definitely straight rumbling because Shannon Sharp hated on Dez for doing exactly what Shannon Sharp did his whole career, which is never shut his mouth. Shannon Sharp was never a quiet, you know, church mouse player. So for you to keep coming at a guy who's not quiet, 
because he's not quiet or say that he's washed up because he don't kiss your ass. Uh, that's a little crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. Get them run DMC Jones. I will. I'm going to grab them big bob football Jones, man. All right, man. Yeah, Jeremy, appreciate that. Yeah, everybody do be safe. Uh, appreciate everybody jumping on. I will uh, put a schedule out. I have a better schedule now that this corona situation is on and popping. Um, I can kind of forecast a little bit better because I, I don't have any responsibilities outside the house as much. And my plant and my business is down. So what else I got to do, man? But sit here and fuck with y'all, man. So I got you. I got you. All right, I'll talk to y'all tomorrow, though. I'm going uh, I'm to go ahead and cut it out. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I'll improve the the quality. I wanted to test it out. That's why I jumped on late. Uh, I'll I'll improve the visual quality by not amplifying it so much because it's, it's definitely clear on my screen. So I think it's I just blew it up so that you can see the defensive line. I just cropped out the rest of everything else, and I don't think it's high resolution enough for me to go that far into it because I think you guys can see this. this uh, let me see what this looks like right now. No, this is grainy, too. This shouldn't be grainy at all. Yeah, I got to fix that. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is because this screen shouldn't be grainy at all. This is all HD. I'm not even using Coach's film, so I don't know what's going on with that. But um, I'll figure it out. Talk to you all tomorrow, man. Peace. I'm still live. There we go. Got it. And I'm still live. What the hell are you doing, man? In the meeting. How you doing? I hit in like four times.